Hi. Hello, everybody. In the previous segment, based on the last seven verses of Matthew 24, from verse 45 to 51, the question is, who then is the faithful and wise servant? Who then is the, who really is the faithful and discreet slave? And we made the point that, contrary to what you are taught when you're a Jehovah's Witness, there are not two servants predicted there. In fact, it's not a prediction at all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a question dangled before all who claim to be Christ's servants as to whether they will be faithful and wise or they will be unfaithful and wicked. Yeah. Told through a parable. And we did make the point that the context immediately before it from verse 36 on is that no one knows the day or the hour. Now that puts the parable, if you want to call it parable, in a peculiar spot because we know if we are addicted to the idea of a faithful discreet slave class that from the beginning that class or individual, in the case of Charles Taze Russell, was addicted to time. Mm -hmm. That was the focus of the message. It was the focus of the literature from the beginning and still is. Mm -hmm. So the time element is right before it in the context from verse 36 on, and of course, right after it, and I didn't make this point last time, but they're right after it in Matthew 25, the parable of the virgins, the 10 virgins, and then the parable of the talents, so-called, where you have three servants. So you have ten virgins, three servants in the next parable, and then of course you have the final judgment depicted in the story of the Son of Man returning and separating sheep from goats, where the judgment is one from another, that is one individual, either sheep or goat. So just like we can't make the ten virgins about ten classes, nor can we make the three servants in the parable of the talents about three different classes of the watched up tries. We need to make that point. In the context, the larger context, it's Jesus leaving the temple in the beginning of Matthew 24 and after making a declaration about the future of that temple. Mm -hmm. That it would be destroyed and not even a stone left upon a stone, which prompts the question from the disciples that causes Matthew 24 and 25 to be related. Mm -hmm. But the larger context, going back before the prediction about the temple, what did Christ said that mm -hmm. caused him to render this judgment upon the most sacred spot of Judaism and Old Testament religion? Mm -hmm. The only place on earth where God's worship was authorized to be performed. Matthew 23 also is familiar to us as Jehovah's Witnesses. And what do we make with what do we do with Matthew 23 if we're tr properly trained Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, whenever it talks about the scribes and Pharisees, we say, well, that's Christendom and, uh, you know, all the bad religions. But we do know something about scribes and Pharisees, that they're Jewish religious leaders. leaders. And they were bad guys. And they were bad guys. <laughs> and though we somehow automatically transfer their character to the clergy of Christendom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's missing from our anal analysis, if we don't look closely at the context, even of Matthew 23, is what did Christ say before he went into this, some would say, rant about the religious leaders of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and Judaism in Judea, anyway? Mm -hmm. Well, the first three verses of Matthew 23 tell us something about the context which might upset your interpretation that the scribes and Pharisees were all out bad guys, i.e. Jewish apostates. Mm -hmm. Want me to read it? 23, 1 to 3. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the seat of Moses. Therefore, all the things they tell you do and observe, but do not do according to their deeds. For they say, but they do not perform. So, contrary to what we think when we're Jehovah's Witnesses, the scribes and Pharisees were not the wrong religion. They or had the right religion. False teachers, yeah. They weren't even false teachers. No. In the sense that we mean it as a Jehovah's Witness, that they were teaching the wrong things. He says, what they tell you, do, do and observe. They're telling you the law of Moses. 
the sin of the scribes and Pharisees and many other religious leaders in Christendom, yes, in mm -hmm. Christendom, but also in the Watchtower and other cults, is that you add to the revelation. It's not that you completely omit God's revelation. Mm -hmm. So we talked about there's there was a certain protections in in the Judaic system of worship because they would regularly be hearing the Word of God whenever they met together. Yeah, how did synagogues. that happen? Because of uh, because they didn't have temples for a while, I guess. They, they didn't have a temple at some so, point. So they had gatherings, which ended up being called synagogue. What does synagogue mean again? Gathering? It's just a, an assembly or a gathering place. Yeah, so they would gather and they would hear the Word. There was a built-in protection in that because what they were hearing was the undiluted Torah, that is mm -hmm. the Law of Moses, plus the Prophets, and for, for all we know they were also hearing part of the other books that are in the Old Testament called mm -hmm. the Writings. Mm -hmm. But the, the emphasis was on the Torah, the Law of Moses plus the Prophets, the written, and, written and Prophets. Their, even in their history, the kings were, were told they had to write out mm -hmm. the, the, the Law. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, there was a, a number of checks and balances there to protect the truth being told. The main one was that we forget, or maybe we never know when we're Jehovah's Witnesses, that mm -hmm. for all Christ denounces the religious leaders of Judea and here, Jerusalem specifically, in this section we're going to read, mm -hmm. most Jews were not living in Judea and in, even in Palestine. They were, yeah. they were living scattered throughout the world. One thing I didn't know when I was a witness was that the total Jewish population in the Roman Empire is estimated to be between six and eight million in those days, which mm -hmm. would make for a far higher proportion of Jews in the world, that is the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. than we have in our Western culture today. So the uh -huh. ratio might be one in 300 or 400 for Jews in our culture today, but it was one in somewhere between 10 and 20 in those days. Mm. So a lot of the people that you knew would be Jews, but they were scattered throughout the Roman Empire in mm. and attending thousands of synagogues and all hearing the Word of God yeah. regularly. Which would explain something that you don't think about when you're a witness. How is it that after Christ dies, you know, Peter stands up and he quotes Scripture. And you, you hear this in the mouths of the, of the different disciples. They're quoting scripture. Well, it's because they were hearing it all the time. So I think in those days you had to memorize. You, you didn't. You couldn't go home and check your Bible. You had to memorize things, and because you were hearing it all the time, it's more likely that things would stick. What do we mean by all the time? Well, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, you might have in the old days anyway, when we were there, maybe uh, four or five hours, maybe five or six hours of religious training a week yeah. where you heard some scripture so you were yeah. reasonably familiar mm -hmm. but the Jews had as far as we can estimate at least as many meetings as that so the average Jew might hear as much as five to fifteen hours of scripture per week because they had mm -hmm. two or three meeting times in the bigger yeah. cities so it's bound some of it's bound to stick some when of it's going to stick when and you're hearing things repeated over and over again and in an oral culture where you don't have your own text where you have to hear the text and and process yeah. it and yeah. ingest it I think it's a, a lesson in how to learn you know mm -hmm. we we often talk, talk in the negative of the cults repeat things and that's their way of, mm -hmm. of spreading propaganda but it's also the way God taught they were to hear the word so that there was no possibility in those circumstances of universal synagogue, not universal literacy, but universal synagogue where the word was heard regularly by everybody, men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. No Sunday schools, by the way. They were all hearing the same law from childhood, which explains how they knew it so well. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. with that, there's no ten, there's no chance of a general apostasy in Judaism. So Judaism mm -hmm. is the true religion, and that's why we made so many videos lately about is is true religion the issue in the New Testament? No, it's mm -hmm. who is who is the Messiah that is the issue. So by the time you get to the latter part of this chapter, where Christ is really letting the local religious leaders, anyway, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, blind guides, he calls them. Who are they? Well, they're the leaders of the establishment, you might say, the religious establishment, specifically in Judea, 
There were only apparently about 6,000 Pharisees in the world, as far as we can estimate. Mm. Probably not as many Pharisees as there were synagogues in the Roman Empire. Mm. So it's not as if the Pharisees could totally control the religious situation. That is the food that the average Jew was able to assimilate. Mm. So by the time you get to verses, the, the latter verses of chapter 23, where the final woes are pronounced, the question that hangs over all of this is, if these, even if these guys are as bad as we tend to think they are as Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. are they going to win? Even in this generation, we made the point in the prior video that there are things that Christ did predict in Matthew 24. They predicted false Christ, false prophets. He predicted persecution of true believers. Mm -hmm. He also indicated that the good news somehow was going to be preached in the whole world. But who's going to do it is, is not clearly predicted unless it is the F FDS class that you're trained to think it is. But if that's not a prediction, then did Christ ever indicate who is going to do this work and therefore who's going to be persecuted for doing mm. this work? And we do have a clear answer here in verses 29 to 39 of chapter 23. Of chapter 23. Okay. So why don't we read that? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the graves of the prophets and decorate the memorial tombs of the righteous ones. And you say, if we were in the days of our forefathers, we would not be sharers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are bearing witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Well then, fill up the measure of your forefathers. Serpents, offspring of vipers, how are you to flee from the judgment of Gehenna? For this reason, here I am sending forth to you prophets and wise men and public instructors. Some of them you will kill and impale, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that there may come upon you all the righteous blood spilled on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the killer of the prophets and the stoner of those sent forth to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks together under her wings. But you people did not want it. Look, your house is abandoned to you. For I say to you, you will by no means see me from henceforth until you say, Blessed is he that comes in Jehovah's name. Mm. So the word Jehovah gets in there. Yeah. Once? Yeah, once. And is it legitimate? Because would Jesus have said publicly? Would any Jew have said publicly? And that's where he is at the time. Well, he would have been stoned on the spot. Well, he either, either would have been stoned for using the name in public, or he would have been arrested mm -hmm. if he's in the temple precincts. Mm -hmm. We made that point in our Acts videos. So, again, there's whether that's true or not, you have no justification for putting it in the Greek because text here. Because in, in the manuscripts you don't find it. No, you don't. Again, adding to Scripture. Another side point is about Zechariah. We might guess if we have the English Bible in front of us. Mm -hmm. This is Zechariah the prophet, the second yeah. last book of the Old Testament. Yeah. From Abel to Zechariah would be A to Z conveniently. But it's not that Zechariah. It's another Zechariah mentioned mm -hmm. in Second in Chronicles, which was the last book of the Hebrew Old Testament. So again, it's the Old Testament canon, and we might not get that. So we would guess the wrong Zechariah. Mm -hmm. Because they, they uh, ar arrange their canon differently yeah. than we do as yeah. well. So not knowing the Jewish context there would actually change your interpretation of the passage. Mm. Force you to guess wrongly. Mm -hmm. But back to the context, which is when Christ says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you build the tombs and you say, if we had lived back when our fathers lived, we wouldn't have been like them. We wouldn't have mm -hmm. shed the blood of the prophets. But... They're claiming a continuity, which is partly justified. Mm -hmm. The continuity with their fathers is they're continuing in the seat of Moses, and they are honoring the prophets, even if it's a little late to honor the people that you're 
ancestors persecuted. Mm -hmm. Which shows you the, yeah. the mechanism or the dynamism that you said before, the protection against general apostasy in Judaism. Mm -hmm. Because although the persecutors are Jewish or Israelites, the prophets are also Jewish. Yeah, that's right. So, so they, it is kind of foretelling the future here because uh, they will continue in the footsteps of their fathers because they end up persecuting the early believers, the apostles, and, and yeah. the early church. Yeah, and I couldn't help but think as we read through this again that the continuity with the past again, even the true prophet, Elijah, at one point in his life when he was depressed and on mm -hmm. the run from Queen Jezebel, thought he was the only faithful one left in Israel. And yeah. God had to yeah. correct them with the fact that there were 7,000 that mm -hmm. God had set apart who would not bend the knee to Baal. Mm -hmm. And that's just in Israel. That's not in the yeah. faithful, faithful southern kingdom. So we're talking about Israel and Israel. Yeah. And that's something that you don't seem to think about when you're a witness. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to stop and think, who are the scribes and the Pharisees, Jews, who are the apostles, Jews? Who are the early church? All Jews. It starts with the Jews. The writers of the New Testament, with one exception. Mm -hmm. And yep. the continuity with the past again, in that you remember, when when Christ says here in 34, which we'll get to in a minute, I will send you. Well, Christ has always been sending. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Christ spoke through the prophets, Peter says. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit of Christ is speaking through the prophets, prophets being Jewish, I remember that line in Jeremiah where he says, I, I kept getting up early and sending you. Like God was deliberately getting up earlier than normal mm -hmm. in the comparison to send them prophets who would correct them yeah. if they would be corrected. Yeah. And, and before the exile, there were six prophets, minor prophets, and two so-called major prophets sent in the 200 years. We forget that too, that the writing prophets of the Old Testament who came after Elijah and Elisha, for 800 to around 550 during mm -hmm. the exile, mm -hmm. all these prophets, nine of, uh, 16 of them all together, mm -hmm. 200 years before the exile and another 100 and so years after the exile, all 16 of the writing prophets are in that period. Mm -hmm. So God was doubling up on the correction, and again, all Jews, mm -hmm. a, a faithful remnant of Israelites being sent to correct his own people. Mm -hmm. So we're not too surprised then when we get to verse 34 and here Christ say, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes. Why don't we hear this verse where more Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses? Well, in this one, they don't even translate it scribes. They translate it public instructors. So the I word send you is scribes. Read it, read the whole thing. Uh, here I am sending forth to you prophets and wise men and public instructors. Some of them you will kill and impale, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, which made me think of Paul. Mm -hmm. Because Paul sends letters to the synagogues, the leaders, and says he's after the people of the way. So he's, he's kind of indicating to them, you watch out for these people. They were still going to the synagogue. So Paul saw it from both sides. He, he yeah. was the persecutor who organized this persecution in the synagogues. Mm -hmm. And he was also in <laughs> suffering later because he himself would take yeah. the gospel to the synagogues. Yeah. And until then they would keep doing it until they were thrown out. Thrown out of the synagogue and out of town, as yeah. he indicates here, would be the case. Mm -hmm. So this brings forth the, the question again. Why don't why doesn't the Watchtower emphasize this verse? Mm -hmm. And And to tell you the truth, Christians don't either because... Somehow we've got a, the similar prejudice if we're Christians as a Jehovah's Witness does, which is, well, there was prophets and apostles, all right, that's the Bible. Mm -hmm. Then after that, there was a general apostasy. Yeah. But there was no general apostasy in the Old Testament. There was a localized apostasy in the Ten Tribe mm -hmm. Kingdom. The South remained loyal, yeah. six good kings down there, and all the prophets, not all the prophets, some of them were sent to the North. So there was continuity, no general apostasy, but it, it relates to this verse that Christ didn't just send us prophets and apostles. Mm -hmm. yeah. He sends us wise men and public instructors, they say, or scribes. Or the scribes, and the scribes would be the writers, right? So 
we, we talked about that that's one of the protections of the, the Jewish faith is that there were people in charge of keeping the writings. Keeping their writings out there. Re rewriting them and making sure they were out there. So all those thousands of synagogues would, and some and some rich Jews too, all mm -hmm. of them would have had scripture and all of it yeah. would have been the work of the scribes. Mm -hmm. Similarly throughout Christian history, even if you're a reader of only one Bible, if, if the only Bible you trust is the New World Translation, you have a similar double think going on in yeah. your mind. Because you're trusting what's gotten horned, the, the translators who are Christians. Anglicans. Yeah. One of them so, a bishop. So Christendom gets a black eye and at the same time gets uh, trusted? trusted for your Bible. Yeah. And similarly about the Old Testament. Yeah. Where who do wrote, we who, think Where do we get from? the Old Testament from? From the Jews, from Israel. And Not Christian scribes. No. Jewish scribes. Yeah. So the Masoretes. Paul, Paul says that's one of the advantages of of Israel, is that they had. The, the writings, they were entrusted, I don't know what the phrase is, but they were entrusted with the, the oracles, oracles of God. Of God. Yeah. yeah. So the question then becomes, did, was Christ vindicated? Did he actually send these public instructors, scribes, wise mm -hmm. men, as well as apostles and prophets to his people? And he says, you, you will persecute them and you will flog them and you will kill them. But he says, the, that the blood of all those generations of persecutors should come mm -hmm. upon this generation. So that this generation prophecy that is more famously in chapter 24 is rooted to this one, which is connected to this one, which is all these things I tell you now will come upon this generation. So will the bad guys win? Clearly no. No, because we still have the, the, the Jewish Bible and we still have the, the New Testament canon as well. And what happened to the scribes, Pharisees, blind guides? Well, they were blasted by the destruction of the temple and the, mm. the Jewish system of things, as we call it as witnesses. They were, it was all gone within 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it is true, the Pharisees' faith survived as modern Judaism. The faith survived, but the institutions, the power to persecute, for instance, mm -hmm. was gone. Mm -hmm. So Christ vindicated his people. So. It's funny that we think, okay, yeah, that, that happened. God vindicated his Christian sent forth ones in the first century, the first generation, the second maybe, when the apostles were still alive. But somehow after that, it, it all yeah. disappeared. And that somehow yeah. the bad guys I, won. I think even just seeing Old Testament history and the survival of, of the, the Old Testament should tell us that God is always there. He's so, always there and he's always protecting and making sure that we have truth. So I guess we should ask we should ask our viewers and Jehovah's Witnesses the question mm -hmm. is his promise to send forth prophets, wise men and scribes, public instructors, does that only apply to the first generation? This generation? It would it would if it if it only applied to them, it would seem kind of a waste that <laughs> Christ whole ministry was a waste, that it didn't accomplish what, what he came to do. He said, I am with you. Always. All the days, always, until the end of the world, yeah. the end of the age. So it would so make I'm, him a false prophet, and, and it would make God mm -hmm. l letting Satan win. Yeah. It's continuity. Mm -hmm. So I can't see that Christ's promise ended with the first generation that he would keep sending such men and the, the, the yeah. gathering of the New Testament canon proves he was vindicated because it's not just the writings of apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. In there are Luke and Mark, yeah. the book of Hebrews, Jude, James, the, James. well James you could make a case is an apostle, well he's not one of the original apostles, mm -hmm. but Jude is in there, Hebrews is in there, Mark and Luke even get to write gospels. They are not, they are not apostles. Mm -hmm. They are at teachers. best, public instructors, teachers, scribes. and scribes, and mm -hmm. scribes, mm -hmm. wise men for sure. Mm -hmm. So d his promise wasn't finished with the apostles in the apostolic era, as we call it. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any case for Christ not fulfilling this promise in subsequent generations. If he says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Mm -hmm. And then you see the heart of Jesus, even in this, 
even in the final verses here. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. So all through the Old Testament, mm -hmm. Christ, God, had been gathering his people and preserving a remnant for himself. Mm -hmm. And there you see his heart, even towards his enemies. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the, re in the reasoning book, I remember the last verse quoted here is, See, your house is left to you. Abandoned. And then Abandoned. they skip. Desolate. They don't mention 39. Why won't they mention 39? Because I think 39 provides hope. Because he says, For I say to you, you will by no means see me from henceforth until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So... I translated that myself. <laughs> the way it should be. <laughs> Until you say. Now, who is you say. here? You is not his friends. You is not even the Jewish people. It's addressed to, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I can't help but yeah. think that we made the point in another video or two mm -hmm. that whenever Christ uses a name twice, a personal name, for instance, Martha, Martha, mm -hmm. Simon, Simon, Simon. Yeah. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? There's yeah. an element of touching tenderness in, in, mm -hmm. in the words, even in black and white on the page. Mm -hmm. But when he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, here, it's evident that there's a pain involved. Mm -hmm. And we know Jesus wept over the city in Luke, right? He yeah. wept over the city and he compares himself to a, a hen that would have always want, willingly gathered, protected mm -hmm. his people, mm -hmm. had they been willing. Yeah. So the heart of Christ is revealed. And if that's the heart of Christ towards the Jewish people who became mm -hmm. his enemies even, yeah. how about the church? And, and we have to keep remembering, like it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. We're not talking about every Jew that lived at the time. They were scattered and they, you know, most of them weren't there when, when Christ was even preaching and to doing his ministry. Thumbs up and or thumbs down on that's Jesus. That's right. They weren't yeah. all there for the vote. No, it was the religious leaders who got their way, and we know they did it because they were jealous. They know they did it secretly, overnight, because they knew that the people weren't with them in their vote. Mm -hmm. So even there you have the, I think, the refutation right there of the idea that the Jews were unfaithful. Most Jews in the Jerusalem area, even, received mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. with joy. Yeah. And that's what caused, finally, his murder. Mm -hmm. We've, we've promised in the prior segment that we were going to get to some individuals who we believe have been, or should be, very easily recognized as faithful and wise servants. Mm -hmm. And they are individuals. And there's always been individuals who meet the qualifications of being sent ones. That is, people who have not only shown the gifts of, the, of, of Christ, very obviously in their ministries on earth, mm -hmm but they've they've had the heart of Christ and that is they've been recognized for those qualifications and those gifts right across the denominational lines that mm -hmm. is whether they're Methodists or Baptists or Presbyterians or even mm -hmm. Anglicans and Roman Catholics and Lutherans they've been recognized across party lines in the churches as being gifted by God and mm -hmm. doing wonderful ministries and there are kind of contrary to what we understood until fairly recently, there are people in this generation yeah. who have qualified. Yeah, who are recognized as being sent by God and preserving the truth. And they're not just available in books, are they? No. we have, With Homeschooling Max, we used YouTube a lot, but we've discovered so many in recent years, and even a new one just recently, of a, of a, a scholar that was a witness. Was a Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. And is a scholar we'd never heard of until, what, two months ago? Yeah. We want to talk about him in the next segment.